Are you looking for ways to keep a record of the office time of your employees? Then you may consider using a timesheet in Excel to manage the office data efficiently. Hello everyone. Welcome to Excel Demi, your day-to-day -day Excel and VBA tutorial helpline. This is Hadiul Washer and today I'll demonstrate how to create a timesheet in Excel. For this video, I'll use Microsoft Excel 365. Let's quickly refresh our idea about the timesheet. It is a method used to record employee time records in the office. Initially, this method was developed to calculate the salary at the end of each month considering overtime and break or lunch hours. In this first example, I'll create an individual employee timesheet for the employee named Joseph. Here you will find his relevant data like the employee ID, department, manager, the present day. In the second portion of this data set, we'll find the name of the day, corresponding date, the time when he joins the office, and the time of his leaving the office. Using this data set, I'll calculate the total hours and the overtime hours. Finally, I'll calculate the work hours in this week and then calculate the final payment. In this tutorial, I have used the 24 hours time format across the data set. To apply the 24 hours time format, select the cells where you want to apply this time format. In my case, I will select cells D8 to E12. Go to the home tab in the number section. Click on this drop down icon. Here you will find available formats. Click on more number formats. This opens the format cells window. Alternatively, you can use Ctrl plus one shortcut to open this format cells window. Here in the number section from the category time, you will find the available types and this is the 24 hours time format. Now click on OK to apply the format. Now let's calculate the total hours. Go to cell F8, type equal. Total hours is the time difference between the out time and the in time. So in cell F8, choose cell E8 minus cell D8 and hit enter. And this returns that the employee has worked 8 hours on this day. Now use the autofill feature to calculate the rest of the total hours. You can see that the total hours are calculated and some values are greater than 8 hours and the times that are greater than 8 hours will be calculated at overtimes. Now to calculate the overtime, first we need to set the standard work hour. Go to cell G5, type equal. I will use the time function to set the standard work hour. So type time. The time function convert times in hours, minutes or seconds to a number. Now press tab to complete the time function as the hour argument of the time function as our standard work hour will be 8 hours. So type 8, place a comma as the minute argument of the time function, set 0. Finally, as a second argument of the time function, place another 0 and close the parenthesis and hit enter. In this way, it will set the standard work hour. Now, we will calculate the overtime hours. The total hours that are greater than 8 hours will be considered as the overtime hours. So, go to cell G8, type equal. I will use the if function to calculate the overtime hours. So, type if. The if function checks whether a condition is met and returns a value based on this condition. Press tab to autocomplete the if function. As the logical test argument of the if function, I will check whether the value of cell F8 is greater than the value of cell G5. So select the cell F8, place the greater than sign and choose the cell G5. As the standard work hour is fixed and the cell G5 contains the value, so I will use the cell G5 reference to calculate the overtimes for the entire data set. So log the cell reference of cell G5 by pressing F4, now place a comma and as the value of true argument, that is if the employee has worked overtime. Then I will calculate the overtime, that is the time difference between the total hours and the standard work hour. So select the total hours minus the standard work hour. Log the cell reference of cell G5 by pressing F4. Now place a comma. As the value of false argument, the overtime hour will be 0. So place 0. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see that as the employee has worked 8 hours on this day, so the overtime hour is 0. Now use the autofill feature to calculate the overtime hours for the entire dataset and you can see that the overtime hours are calculated. In this example, I'll create an Excel timesheet template for all employees. Here, I'll calculate the total working hours excluding the lunch break. You will find the starting time of lunch break in column D and the ending time of the lunch break in column E. And the total working hours is the summation of the working hours before and after the lunch break. To get the working hours before the lunch break, you need to get the time difference between column D and column C. And to get the working hours after the lunch break, 
you need to get the time difference between column F and column E. Now, to calculate the total working hours, go to cell G8, type equal. First, I will calculate the working hour before the lunch break. So, open a parenthesis, select the cell D8 minus select the cell C8 and close the parenthesis. This will calculate the working hours before the lunch break. Now, place a plus sign, open a parenthesis. Now, I will get the working hours after the lunch break. So, select cell F8 minus cell E8. Close the parenthesis and this is the working hour after the lunch break. Finally, press enter to calculate the total working hours and you can see the total working hours are calculated in cell G8. Now to calculate the total working hours for the entire data set, you can use the autofill feature. In this way, you can calculate the total working hours of all the employees. In this example, I'll create an Excel timesheet template counting the working days and excluding the holidays, weekend, and leave. In this data set, I have the start date and the end date. I'll calculate the total working days in between. You'll find the name of the holiday and the corresponding date here. Now, to calculate the number of holidays that falls between the start date and the end date of the first employee, go to cell E8, type equal. I'll use the sum product function, so type sum product. The sum product function returns the products of your selected range. So press tab to auto complete the sum product function. Now I'll check if the values of column K are greater than the starting date and less than the end date. So to check the first condition, open a parenthesis, select the cells K5 to K14, press F4 to lock the cell reference, type greater than equal and select the cell C8. Close the parenthesis and this is the first condition that will check if the values of cells K5 to K14 are greater than or equal to the value of cell C8. Now place an asterisk, open the parenthesis of the second condition, select the cells K5 to K14 again, press F4 to lock the cell reference, type less than equal and select the end date that is cell D8. Close the parenthesis of the second condition, finally close the parenthesis of the sum product function. This formula will count the total numbers of holidays that fall between cell C8 and D8. Now hit enter. You can see the formula has returned 4. This means there are 4 holidays between the starting date and the ending date of the working days of Joseph. Now to calculate the holidays for the entire data set, you can use the autofill feature. Now to count the weekends, click on cell F8, type equal, I will use the days function to type days. The days function returns the number of days between two dates. I will press tab to auto complete the days function. As the end date argument of the days function, select the cell D8, place a comma. As the start date argument of the days function, choose cell C8. Close the parenthesis, place a minus sign. Next, I will use a network days function. So type network days. The network days function returns the number of work days between two dates. Press tab to auto complete the function. As the start date argument of the network days function, choose the cell C8, place a comma. As the end date argument of the network days function, choose the cell D8 and close the parenthesis. Here, the days function will return the number of days between the starting date and the ending date. On the other hand, the network days function will return the number of working days between the starting date and the ending date. And so their difference will return you the number of weekends. Now press enter to get the number of weekends. And you can see the number of weekends are calculated here. Now use the autofill feature to get the weekends for all the employees. And in this way, the number of weekends are calculated for all the employees. Now in the leave column, I will enter the number of leaves taken by each employee. So in cell G8, type the leave days for the employee Joseph. And this value is 5. Hit enter. Now let me quickly fill up the leave values for all the employees. I have inserted all the leave days. Now I am ready to calculate the working days. So go to cell H8, type equal, type the days function. As the end date argument of the days function, select the cell D8, place a comma. As the start date argument of the days function, choose cell C8, close the parenthesis. This will return the total number of days between the start date and the end date. However, I need to subtract the holidays, the weekends, and the leaves from the total number of days. So place a minus, open a parenthesis, and to get the sum of the non-working days, use the sum function. So type sum as the number one argument of this sum function. 
select the cells E8 to G8. Close the parenthesis of the sum function. Now close the parenthesis. This formula will return you the number of working days by subtracting the non-working days from the number of total days between the start date and the end date. Now to add the start date to our account, I need to add 1. So add 1 and hit enter. You can see the number of working days are calculated here. Use the autofill feature to get the number of working days for all the employees. And you can see the number of working days for all the employees are calculated here. In this way, you can create an Excel timesheet template counting working days. If you want to protect your worksheet, that is no one can change the values of this worksheet without authorization, then move to the review tab. From the protect section, you can choose the option according to your choice. You can protect the worksheet or the entire workbook or you can allow edit ranges. For example, if you want to allow the users with passwords to edit the ranges of working days, you can choose the allow edit ranges option. This opens the allow users to edit ranges window. To create the range, click on new and this opens new range window. The title is range 1 and in the refers to cells field, you will find the range that I have just selected. You can set the range password here. Let me use my password. Finally, click on OK. The confirm password window will open. Here, you need to re-enter the password you have just entered. So re-enter the password and click on OK. And this creates range 1 that is password protected. Finally, click on OK. In this way, you can allow users with this password to edit this range. Now to protect the worksheet from the review tab, in the protect section, click on protect sheet. This opens the protect sheet window. By default, select locked cells and select unlocked cells are checked and the option protect worksheet and contents of locked cells are enabled. Now set the password to unprotect sheet. So let me set my password and click on OK. This opens the confirm password window. Here I need to re-enter the password. So let me type my password and click on OK. And this has set the worksheet as a protected worksheet. Now we cannot make changes to this worksheet without the password. For example, if you go to cell G14 and want to change this value to 4, if you press 4, then a warning window opens and a request to enter the password to change the worksheet is made. Now click on OK. Finally, if you want to change the value from the review tab in the protect section, you need to click on this unprotect sheet option. And this opens the unprotect sheet window. Now let me use my password and click on OK. And you can see the worksheet is unprotected now. So you can make changes to any cells of this worksheet. For example, go to cell G14 and type 4 and hit enter. And you can see the change is made. In this way, you can protect and unprotect worksheets. Finally, if you want to print your worksheet, then go to the file tab and here you will find different options as we will print the worksheet. So I will click on print option. Alternatively, you can press Ctrl plus P to print this worksheet. Here we will find different settings relevant to this printing. You can change the orientation, click on this drop down icon and choose the orientation according to your need. In my case, the default orientation is perfect. So I'll stick with this default orientation. If you are done with the settings, you can finally click on this print icon to print your worksheet. I have demonstrated the step-by-step -step guide for creating a timesheet in Excel. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions, or feedback in the comment section below. You can go to exceldemy.com to read our Excel blog or you can share your Excel related issues in our Exceldemy forum and receive free solutions. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye.